Um, <coughs> I apologize for the slight delay in starting. We had to have a quorum, which we now do. Um, we have a small agenda tonight. Um, approval of minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, we have uh, Old Mill Road four lot subdivision. Mark Jordy is requesting a minor subdivision review of a four lot subdivision located at Old Mill Road. <coughs> And lastly, there will be an opportunity for public comment on any matter which hasn't been on the agenda. Uh, we'll start off with the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, which have been circulated. Um, does anybody have any comments? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to approve. Motion. Thank you. Second? Second. Okay, the, we have a seconded motion. Is there any discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously, thank you. <clears throat> the next item of business is the Old Mill um, subdivision. <coughs> Excuse me. We will um, follow the uh, following procedure. And we, we've decided we'll probably have a little bit more elaboration of the history of this application following the presentation uh, by the applicant. So if you've noticed something slightly different, it's just because we thought it would be useful to say a little bit more about the application process for the public record. The, uh, first of all, the applicant will summarize any changes made to the plan since the last meeting. There will then be a public comment period. Since this, we, there's been a previous public uh, comment uh, in a prior meeting, we will follow the policy of limiting public comment to 15 minutes with a maximum of three minutes per speaker. We will then uh, begin discussion of the application, and at the end of the discussion, we'll have the option to approve, approve with conditions, table, or deny the application. Um, we first hear from the applicant, uh, John. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, representing Mark Jordy for the uh, four lot residential subdivision located on Old Mill Road. Uh, if the board remembers, in last month we requested to be tabled uh, so that to allow us um, a little time to resolve some of the uh, some of the language in the declaration as well as some of the notes uh, indicated on the subdivision plan. I'm just quickly going to go uh, review the, uh, the changes that have been made, uh, many of which were uh, discussed last month. Uh, first of all, uh, we have addressed all of Steve Harding's comments. There were only three um, listed on our, uh, the, front, the first page and part of the second page. Um, the first was monumentation, second was site distance, uh, Steve wanted the note regarding site distance um, amended to include the actual distance um, of site distances, and a very minor comment to the uh, to the one of the details regarding the grass shoulders. So all of those have been addressed. Um, secondly, the plan revisions uh, we've met um, with Marine. Uh, and have had several discussions with uh, Rick Cheney, Mark's attorney, um, regarding some of the notes um, on the plan as well as, um, as, well as the declaration. Uh, the first uh, is listed on the second page of, of my memo. Um, under no clearing line, uh, note 23 was amended uh, slightly to um, to identify the no clearing line. What we did was uh, we, we have a series of six offsets uh, from lots two and three um, with distances and bearings uh, to actual monuments that have been placed along the no clearing line. So this uh, very clearly establishes that line and with a note um, 23 indicating that there shall not be any clearing, including mowing, uh, southerly of that line. 
Secondly, uh, we've established a, um, an area labeled groomed lawn area. Um, we've established by this area by a series of crosshatch, uh, primarily in the um, setback areas um, of lots two and three. These are areas that are currently uh, being mowed. They're part of the meadow. And uh, note 18A uh, talks to this area, allowing the Homeowners Association to continue maintaining that mowed layer area. Um, so, you know, we don't want any discrepancy or m any misunderstanding because these are areas that are currently being mowed, but they're outside the building envelope. Number three, um, there is a very small area uh, in the northeast corner of lot two that we're labeling as uh, tree trim area uh, with a note, it's actually 18C, um, which uh, will allow the homeowner of lot two uh, the ability to do any trimming or clearing of trees uh, in this very small area. It's an area that consists of uh, approximately, it's 30, 30 feet wide by about 40 foot in length. So it's roughly 1,200 square feet. Um, again, it's in the building envelope, but um, it, there, are, there are some trees in this area that would uh, significantly block views to the, to the ocean uh, from this location here. Four, uh, number four is uh, common land. Um, there are just very minor um, modifications to note 23 um, regarding the common land. Uh, and again, we met with Marine and reviewed all of these, uh, these modifications. Um, and then finally, uh, there was a note, note number 29 on the subdivision plan that was added that has to do with referencing provisions of the declaration um, on road maintenance. Those are the five changes that were made to the, uh, to the subdivision plan since our last uh, submission. Um, and as we have reviewed in the past, uh, we're requesting four waivers. Uh, the completed HHE 200 forms, the scale not to exceed one inch equals 40 feet, a waiver on the road width uh, from 22 down to 14, um, and uh, the fourth waiver is uh, road alignment. The road alignment deviating uh, slightly from the center line of the 50 foot right of way. Are there any questions? <clears throat> Members, questions? John. Um, I, I don't know if this is more for uh, the applicant or for Marine, but the idea behind the no clearing line, what was that about? Marine, do you want to? Sure. So um, I, will, I will make it clear that this was something that I advocated for with the applicants. And they've come a long way. Uh, the main concern is that in the RP1 buffer, which is most of the common land, you're allowed to maintain existing lawn area. But where, where it's natural vegetation, you want to preserve it in its natural state. But the natural progression of most property owners is that the mowed area starts to encroach into the natural area. And we don't want that to happen because the natural area is really what is protecting the water quality, what's protecting the, the wildlife habitat of the brook. And, we, and our problem has been it's very difficult to enforce that in the field if you don't do a good job identifying it before you grant the approval. So the applicants were asked to very clearly, to find a way, and there are different ways to do it, to really clearly document a line that shows where there should not be any more mowing. And south of that line, it is allowed to main, be maintained as just natural vegetation, which is what it is right now. And north of that line, it would continue to be mowed, which is what it is right now. 
the, the struggle is to do it in such a way that it's very well documented and it's relatively easy for the code enforcement officer to check it in the field if he receives a complaint. So what the applicants have done is they have shown a very clear line on the plan. They have a, labeled it a no clearing line. They've talked about what it means, what can happen north of it, what can happen south of it. And then they've done these dimensions with monuments, which should go a long way towards helping the code officer check it if he receives a complaint that there are violations. So that was that whole effort. And the applicant's okay with this? We well, are. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's been done. The monuments are in place. And just out of curiosity, when we took our site walk, when we walked in the, um, in the meadow, on the, is it how the field is now, or was in the fall when we were there, is it sort of the no clearing line? Is that natural sort of short grass? It is. All right. Yep. Yep. It's the mowed edge. And <clears throat> we actually took the monuments and we put them a couple, two or three feet into the, um, the taller grass so that the mower wouldn't, so the monuments wouldn't interfere with the mower. Okay. Uh, Maureen, to be clear though, the, the goal of this no clearing line and these restrictions is to protect Alewife Brook, is that correct? It's, yeah, it's to protect <clears throat> Alewife Brook and to really put some teeth behind ex the expectation that what the current regulations are are actually going to be enforced. So if you're within an RP1 buffer, you're not supposed to be creating new lawn area. And this is just trying to document what's there now so it doesn't get created over time. And the, the provision for not removal of stumpage is, I, I, didn't, I guess I didn't quite understand that. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. Um, actually, that note that the applicant has is a note that's evolved over time by the planning board. And you, know, you used to have a note that said, uh, no, no removal of vegetation except for installation of driveways and utilities. Um, and some folks said, well, if the tree dies or if the tree's threatening the house, can't we show a little flexibility? So we evolved into a note that said, no removal of vegetation except for removal of diseased and dying vegetation. And then what happened is all of a sudden we had an incredible flurry of very sick trees all the time um, with really healthy looking stumps. So that wasn't, the planning board was quite frustrated at you, you prior, your, your predecessors were very angry when you went out to places that were supposed to be a maintained buffer and there was nothing left. So we ended up with this note that was fairly draconian that said no removal except for utilities and driveways. And you know, we have had some situations where it made sense to remove a tree that was absolutely dead. And in order to avoid the abuses of the past and still show some flexibility, we have this note that really comes out of the state shoreland zoning regulations. And I was a member of that stakeholder group. And the idea was that if there really is a good reason to remove a tree, you can remove it. You need to have the code officer come and you know, actually make sure that you're not just removing the tree. And if you are removing the tree because it's a threat, you shouldn't be using that as an opportunity to expand your lawn area. And that's another reason why you leave the stump in place, because it's supposed to naturally revegetate. That, that's how the whole thing has evolved. And this note is the same note that you applied to the most recent approval for the old Seapoint subdivision. But just to be clear, mm -hmm. if a really, really dead tree, you cut it down, you have a two-foot stump, you, leave the stump. You, you can't come in with a stump grinder. And no. Yeah. No, because it's, it's supposed to be a natural, what happens is you want to maintain the duff layer, which has the tree, has the leaves and the pine needles and um, people are just incredibly tempted once they take out the stump that all of a sudden their lawn starts to grow and they reseed it and they start mowing it. It's supposed to be natural area. <coughs> oh, Henry. Yeah, it just the common lot for common land and the common area that this is common just to the to this to this area, not common to uh, public correct public access. Correct. Correct. So forgive me. Hey, who's to complain about the removal of anything? I mean, somebody in lot three, I, I'm sure they're trustworthy, um, removes something, but it's only the landholders and the 
people who live there, how would they know that something, where would you receive the complaint from? You asking me? Um, I don't know who I'm asking the question of. I'm putting it out there because it seems to me a, that... It's very possible, Henry, that one of the lot owners would complain to the town about actions taken by one of the other lot owners. We have it happen on a regular basis. Okay, and I'll take that as an answer. Okay, um, Caroline? No questions for John. Just one other question. Um, with regards to the, the tree trim area on lot two, is, is that necessary to put in there? Okay. Um, the trees? The tree trim area. The tree trim. Yes, it, I mean, again, what, you have a standard in your subdivision ordinance that says you have to make sure that there's a buffer from other properties for the new subdivision. And the standard way for applicants to meet the buffer requirement is to leave existing vegetation in place. They promise to leave the existing vegetation. They don't have to go to the expense of planting new vegetation. So it's pretty standard to have a building envelope on a lot and promise to leave the vegetation that's outside the building envelope. In this particular instance, the applicant has done two additional things. They have, they have one, wanted to make clear that where it's already being mowed, they want to continue to be able to mow it. And if the area, for example, on lot three and lot two to the south, if that entire area south of the building envelope is mowed, you still have a buffer that's adjacent to Alewife Brook. On lot three, there are some trees outside the building envelope that the applicant would like the opportunity to remove. And that's why they're calling them out explicitly that, yes, they can remove them even though they're outside the on, building envelope. On lot two. Lot two, lot two yeah. Even okay. so, they're outside the building envelope. Right. And in that case, you're relying on that other common land area to create some kind of vegetated buffer. Okay. And given the fact that it's, that is bordering uh, lot four, which is the common land, there's not going to be any building on there anyway. So. Correct. Right. Correct. And, you know, it's really the abutter is the Atlantic Ocean, so. I okay. won't get a complaint. Hopefully not. I have one other question. Uh, Henry, yes. Sorry. Sorry. I know we've been through this before with, to do with the road width and the fact that we said, well, there would be passing points where the driveways were. Correct? Correct. The only thing is when I look at the plan, I, I don't see how you're going to actually pull off if you're coming up towards Old Ocean House Road and there's a car coming down towards the other. Um, it doesn't look like there's a, a shoulder to pull it, just sort of a right angle to the, to the driveway. Is it going to be shouldered or is it going to be a gentle thing? How, how would you pass without pulling down the runway, the, well, um, the driveway? Well, first of all, the the uh, the proposed road improvements we're widening that from its present width to 14 feet wide right with two foot wide grass shoulders so, so a total of 18 feet so you put you're suggesting they pull up onto the grass shoulder if they have to i mean the the current paved section in the front right here henry right is 14 feet Right. So it's, it's the same width as we're proposing for the balance of the road. All right. I'm good. <coughs> okay, John, thank you. Uh, thank you. We'll now uh, have an opportunity for the board to discuss with each other the uh, proposal. I'd like to just run through some Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Romeo is about to remind me. We do have an opportunity for a public comment, and I apologize for having glossed over that. Uh, would any member of the public like to be heard? Yes, ma'am. If you'd like to take the uh, podium, oh, that's, we'll do the best we can. If you could give your name and your address, please. Yes, Barbara Wickham, 20 Old Mill Road, Cape Elizabeth. I just wanted to ask, I know you're avoiding ledge on the road and it's deviating in some way. And I know you have this information. I'm just not getting it yet. 
How is it deviating? <laughs> in other words, is it moving in towards my lot at all? How is it being altered is the question. Well, uh, perhaps John can respond to that. I, I sure, think Mr. Mitchell. Sure, and then she's done and steps away from the podium. Explain it to me. Let's go to a different plan. So, the, the roadway, the alignment of the roadway, of the proposed roadway, will be exactly the same. And where it deviates out of the, out of the center line of the 50-foot right-of-way is in this area right here, where that large ledge outcrop is. I mean, that, the assumption is that's why they did this originally. Um, but, but we're not we're not changing the current alignment. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Is that it? Is, is is that all you had to? Okay. Thanks. Would any other member of the public like to be heard? Okay. There being no more takers, we'll close the public comment period. Um, the board will have an opportunity to discuss this. Uh, I'm going to. Also, just sort of review the work we've done in this application. <coughs> Peter, can I just say one, yes, thing, one thing about the ledge? Um, when we went on the site walk, the ledge was pointed out to us by the applicant. And I think we all sort of had a consensus that uh, it was much easier and much, um, uh, it was probably better off that the road kind of go around that ledge because it, it was rather than cut into it. So I think it was a pretty, um, it was a good suggestion by the applicant to do that. So. Yeah. yeah, the norm is that the road, the center line of the road follows the center line of the right of way, except where it seems wise to do a different approach. Okay. Um, we've had app the applicant, <coughs> excuse me, the applicant has submitted materials and plans dated May 27, July 1, and July 29, 2016. And we've also had an email from the applicant's attorney. The planning board has received written comments from the town planner on June, dated June uh, 21, July 19, and August 16, with, in all cases, with detailed analysis of the application vis-a-vis -vis the requirements of the um, subdivision and uh, zoning ordinances. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we have supplemental suggested conditions of approval that were prepared and provided to the planning board on July 19th. The town engineer has provided written comments on June, dated June 13, July 11, and August 9. Uh, the fire chief has provided an email dated June 13, and the code enforcement officer has provided an email um, dated June 14. Well, I won't attempt to summarize any of these, but they're all in the public record and they've all been considered in considerable detail by the planning board. Uh, we had a very lengthy site walk on December 6th, and we really circumnavigated the property. And uh, John was able to point out a lot of these uh, issues that we've been talking about, about the um, preservation of the natural boundary of the Elwes Brook, um, the, some of the topography that led to a uh, adjustment of the no build line, uh, the setback line. Um, Excuse me. And we had a workshop on December 1 and planning board meetings on June 21, July 19, and August 16. So I think it's fair to say that uh, this application has received a great deal of attention from the board with a great deal of professional input from the um, various uh, town uh, staff who look at these things as well as a great deal of input from the applicants. Um, professional advisors. Um, I won't go through in, in, in great detail the various criteria that we look at, but just to address the, the highlights, uh, one, of the, one of the major things that we focus on in this particular application has been the buffering and the preservation of natural space. And uh, that's what actually took it down to this meeting because there were some fine detail to be negotiated on the uh, no, no cut line and uh, the identification of, of where cutting could be done and where it could not be done. 
and what should be done with the areas that are supposed to be, remain natural. The, um, the, the, the preservation of, of the wildlife habitat, the protection of alewife book, uh, and the assurance that the meadow will not grow into a uh, groomed lawn area has, has, has been really up at the head of the list. Um, because of the presence of Alewife Brook, um, there was one issue on the lot, the lot adjacent to Mr. Jordy's uh, property, where um, I remember at the time it struck me that it was sort of like a mini continental divide where the, the terrain was such that it drained one way or the other way. And this uh, facilitated, as the ordinance permits, a, an adjustment to the um, setback line for building, which basically enabled that parcel to have the house built in a, in a logical place without endangering the wetland. Um, that is it, at least in a, in a nutshell. In a nutshell, I'd like to describe it. I'd like to hear from any other board members on things that have uh, impressed them, pro and con on this application, uh, concerns they have, points they'd like to make. Uh, Jonathan? Um, I, I thought the applicant did a good job with sort of this, this evolved from originally when it came in um, with regards to where water lines were going to be, the width of the road. Um, I, I know that they met with the fire chief who advised um, where the turnaround was going to go, that that was changed. Um, so, and then also with the evolution of how they were going to handle the common land. Uh, to accommodate the requests of the uh, town staff. Uh, I really thought that the applicant did a good job with making sure that all the ordinances were complied with and um, also it was never a mystery what waivers they were going to request and they did a good job with uh, explaining why those were necessary and um, so I applaud the applicant with uh, a very diligent uh, presentation with regards to everything from uh, from the workshops to the site walks to the I guess this would be the second time that this has been presented to the board. Caroline? Oh, one thing too, um, and also with keeping the, um, we did hear from one member of the public who is in a butter and it was nice to hear from them and uh, keeping, I know the applicant kept them uh, in the uh, loop on what was happening too. So that was nice to see. Thank you. Uh, Caroline? Yeah, I was, but, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. you were, no, sure. Oh. I was fairly impressed with the way it tries to preserve a natural look to it uh, as a development, development area, in, instead of just in your face sort of development. It's a nice, smooth, flowing layout. And I was relatively impressed with that. And obviously the amount of detail of all of the points from the bottom of the plan pretty well described what's going on. I'm impressed. I'll just say that I second what uh, Jonathan and Henry have both said. And I, I'm, I have some comments on our motion, our proposed motion to adjust some things. Okay, we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Are you ready for that? <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, maybe I'm just repeating what everybody else said. I, it is nice to find a situation where a beautiful piece of land is well, subdiv subdivided as the owner is entitled to, but with a view to maintaining such a large uh, amount of space in its natural condition. I think it preserves the beauty of the neighborhood and uh, any time people approach development this way, it's, uh, I think, to be applauded. Uh, and the, uh, I, I think the restrictions that were put on the meadow area are probably not, well, hopefully not too onerous for the applicant. Um, but I, I, I think they are designed to pr preserve the beauty of the neighborhood and of the town. Uh, and I, I hope they're, you know, going to be well received and, and respected in, in detail. Uh, 
we, if there's no more discussion or comment by board members before we go into doing a motion, Caroline, you have some text? Yes, I have, I have a, three things that I'd wanna, I want to propose. Um, and under findings of fact number five, uh, there's a, currently there's a sentence that states the subdivision um, for the, the road network, okay, subdivision does not provide uh, for road network connectivity while discouraging through traffic. This is, this is addressing one of the, one of our things on our checklist that we're supposed to look for, but it's really not applicable to this because there is no other, there is no, nothing for this to connect to. So I am proposing that we change it to the subdivision does not provide for road network connectivity, period, or, or comma, as it is not applicable to this project. How's that sound? What about where it meets the main road? That's not what it's getting at. It's getting at other roads going off this road into. Well, I understand that, but but is that covered by that statement that you that you? I don't know. Do you do you? Uh, That's you not question I right wrong? Yeah. In essence, he's saying that road um, network road network connectivity is not an issue in this subdivision. It's really within the subdivision. Okay. So saying that via technical uh, expert on these. Questions. Right. Your standard typically is that if there's adjacent vacant land that has development potential, you should be laying out road rights of way for future connection from your current development to potential future development. In this instance, on the southern side of the property, you have Alewife Brook. And so there's really no development opportunity crossing Alewife Brook. On the northern side, there is already a road that connects to the northern side called Old Mill Road, and also another road further down that connects to a driveway. And then um, you have very little frontage on Old Ocean House Road that would merit the need to connect to Old Ocean House Road. You already have a connection. So you usually lay out the connection when you have a large chunk of adjacent undeveloped land. And I think that's why uh, Ms. Jordan is saying that it's just not applicable for this particular property. Well, why don't we replace that sentence with road network connectivity is not an issue in this application? It's, it's not what? Is not uh, a concern or is not an issue in this application? Or in the you, grand you scheme could, of things? You could definitely, you, there's, you know, there's not one right way to say this. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Is that, okay, so yeah. road network connectivity um, is not a concern in this application. Okay. All right. Further down on number five. Could, could I just? Okay, go ahead. It's just when you say something like that, you should probably say, because there are no large abutting vacant properties. Okay, I'm writing. You see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because there are no large abutting properties. Okay. Apparently you realize that this is going to make you the reader of this entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm writing so quickly. Um, further down, where am I? The last sentence, where the option is roads are or are not designed to meet town standards. On very, five, number five, very last sentence, that currently, as it's currently written, we are two sentences before that, we are addressing a waiver to the town standards. So how do you answer that question? How do you answer that sentence? So. I'm proposing that it be roads are designed to meet town standards with approved waiver. And if there's a better way to state that, please jump in. And state Within it. the approved waiver? So, yeah. yeah, because we, the narrowness. And the, yep, so. Okay. 
uh, meet town standards um, with and approved with, with, approved, with the approved with, with the, the approved, above waiver. Yeah, I mean, the, the waiver is addressed two sentences before this. Yep. Okay. So. And then the very end under conditions of approval. I'm proposing that we add a condition of approval stating that a performance guarantee shall be submitted prior to construct prior to beginning construction of the road. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Performance guarantee shall be paid prior submitted paid prior to beginning construction of the road. Or beginning road construction, however you want to say it. That's, uh, is that in the conditions? It's under, it would be adding that condition. Number five. I'm not, I'm waiting for uh, others to accept these. I, you know. just with, is a performance guarantee necessary with regards to the, the road or would that go to the individual lots? The, the, I mean, the ordinance requires a performance guarantee whenever there's any road construction. And to be very brutally honest with you, um, the chances of your approved plans actually being built um, are greatly enhanced when there's a performance guarantee. So the performance guarantee means that the applicant they have to post a financial guarantee that they're going to build according to the approved plans. It pulls in the public works director and the town engineer to do inspections. They pay an inspection fee to cover those inspections. Where you have not had performance guarantees, is where you've had the biggest problems with compliance with your approvals. Okay. And, but that's something that a person would have to do anyway? Yes. And, and I'll tell you why I brought it up. I was struggling with something, and it was, do we have the road built prior to building, you know, that the road must be built prior to issuance of a building permit? But logically, to me, it says, I don't want to build a new road and then run construction equipment over it. So, you know, how do I do that? And this seemed like the best solution. I must say, I called up and hashed around with, with Maureen my thoughts, and that's, this is the suggestion. No, that's from your perspective. But I right? see that John has, would like yeah, to say something. Uh, Ms. Jordan was concerned that we didn't want to require the applicant to build the road and then get it all beat up as the construction vehicles were driving over the road to build the new homes. If you have a performance guarantee in place, you can pull your building permit, you can build your home, and then you can build the road. Because the town is holding the money that guarantees that road construction will happen. We routinely do this in private access. All the time. It yeah. happens with subdivisions, it happens with site plans, it happens with private access way permits. Do you have a problem with that? I just, not on that item, but I just wanted to make a comment on, before you vote on the findings of fact, on item number eight, um, I believe, Maureen, you were going to clarify that item with the board, that last sentence in item eight. Yeah, I was going to point out under item eight, the third line, greater specificity, I would change the verb shall be to its. Okay. I'm with that. That's eight. Number eight in the findings of fact. We're in special uh, condition number three. Mm -hmm. It's a condition that we grant the waivers. We actually have already granted them. Well. Earlier in the resolution, right? Yep. No, this, the, the, you don't do anything until you actually say be it therefore be it ordered which starts in the bottom of page seven mm -hmm. so this i mean in the past you have never officially included the waiver granting in your motion the fact that you approved plans that showed waivers was considered you the implication you granted the waiver We've as the as you well we know a waiver is granted correct but the findings are supposed to support the motion so the motion is the, is the action. So it's just reiterating what the findings are. The finding is just re the finding no, is just re reiterating what is in uh, condition three of your motion. Well, I guess the point I'm making is that right. <coughs> therefore, be it order is the 
that's the final act of approval. Correct. And we say, et cetera, et cetera, one, two, three, four, five. Number three says that a waiver has to be granted, which implies it hasn't yet been granted. So don't we need some lingo in here somewhere to say it is hereby granted? The reason, under number five on page six, you are required to make a finding that the roads are laid out to conform to existing topography as much as is feasible. Mm -hmm. And the waiver is referenced there in order to show how you are changing your approval in order to comply with topography. So if you don't like the tense, you can say a waiver from the road width is proposed to be granted or will be granted or is requested to avoid, you, I mean, you could do all of that if you want. But then how do you document that it actually has been granted? The granting would be under the motion on page eight. That, that condition number three is my effort to explicitly allow you to grant a waiver. Yeah, it works. But doesn't that imply there's something else that's going to happen to say that the waiver has been granted? No. Number three says the planning board grants, grants waivers, waivers for road width and road alignment. All this is is a statement that explicitly acknowledges that so, you've granted waivers okay, in these two you're areas. You're saying that is the grant of the waiver itself. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying number three on page eight is the actual grant of the waiver. Okay, yes. even though it's listed as a condition, that's what I think confused me. Right, and right. you know, we can do it a different way that we're, we're kind of, yeah. you know. Maybe you quibble, okay, I got it. Uh, Caroline, are you all set with your? Yep. Yeah. Are you guys are you guys all good with my suggestions? I mean, what was can I ask what your wording is on, mm -hmm. on condition five, please? The performance guarantee. Well, mine's pretty generic. Mine's pretty choppy. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chair, am I am I permitted to comment on on one of these points or no? Yes. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mark. Yeah. Am I permitted to comment on one of the suggestions that's been made or no? Uh, at this point, probably not. And then, well, could you concisely say what you have in mind? I can't promise you all. On, on, the, on the, the point of um, uh, the performance guarantee, uh, it, it's my present intention to complete the road construction uh, before the lots were built on. Uh, because the, the, the main objective there is to get the water line and utilities into the ground and ready to be connected to the build to the buildable lots. Uh, it's my expectation that uh, when the lots are sold, uh, among the conditions of sale will be any damage that your builders make to the road will require restatement by them. Okay. Uh, I think Caroline's suggestion, nonetheless, was to make it more. It allows either thing to happen. Yeah, either thing to any happen. Of that to happen. However, whatever order, yeah. or you could defer building the, you know, loaming and seeding the shoulders until. Okay, uh, so Carolyn, could you repeat for only your your lingo? On oh, that? we're good. Oh, you're good. Maureen has it. Oh, okay. Maureen has it. Maureen's going to read it to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, since you have all this text in front of you, would you mind, Carolyn, reading the, uh, the full dog and pony? The full show? document. I'll do my best. Thank you. Okay, motion for the board to consider findings of fact. Mark Jordy is requesting a minor subdivision review of a proposed four lot subdivision located at 41 Old Mill Road, which requires review under section 16-2-3 of the subdivision ordinance. Two, the subdivision will not result in undue water pollution. The subdivision is located in the 100 year floodplain, however, no alteration is proposed within the floodplain. Soil will support the proposed uses. The slope of the land, proximity to streams, and state and local water resource rules and regulations will not be compromised by the project. Three, the subdivision lots will have sufficient quantity and quality of potable water through the connection of a proposed public water line to be installed on Old Mill Road. Four, the subdivision will not cause soil erosion based on the erosion control plan provided. Five, the subdivision will not cause unreasonable road congestion or unsafe vehicular and pedestrian traffic. The subdivision 
This is one of the ones that I've got scribbles all over. The subdivision road network connectivity is not a concern on this application because there are no large abutting parcels. Um, okay, where am I? I lost my mm -hmm. yeah. roads are laid out to conform to existing topography as much as is feasible. A waiver from the road width and road alignment will be granted to avoid a top topographical change by removing by removing ledge knoll and minimize the removal of trees. All lots are provi provided with vehicular access. Roads are designed to meet town standards with the above approved waiver, or when the above waiver is approved, whatever, however. Six, the subdivision will provide for adequate sewage disposal Final HHE 200 subsurface water, wastewater disposal forms will be reviewed by the code enforcement officer prior to issuance of a building permit for the lots. Seven, the subdivision will provide for adequate solid waste disposal. Eight, the subdivision will not have an un undue adverse impact on scenic or natural areas, historic sites, significant wildlife habitat, rare natural areas, or public access to the shoreline. Greater specificity is provided on the location of the natural vegetation line adjacent to Alwise Brook to prevent encroachment of the groomed vegeta vegetation area. Nine, the subdivision is compatible with the applicable provisions of the comprehensive plan and town ordinances. 10, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. 11, the subdivision will not adversely impact surface water quality with preservation of the naturally vegetated area adjacent to Alive Brook. 12, the subdivision will not adversely impact the quality or quantity of groundwater. 13, the subdivision will comply with the flood floodplain regulations chapter 6. 14, the subdivision is in compliance with the town wetland regulations in the zoning ordinance with the preservation of the naturally vegetated area adjacent to Ally Brook. 15, the propo proposed subdivision will provide for adequate stormwater management. 16, the subdivision is not located in the watershed of Great Pond. 17, the subdivision is not located in more than one municipality. 18, the subdivision is not located on land with liquidation har where liquidation harvesting was conducted. 19, the subdivision does provide for access to direct sunlight. 20, the subdivision does provide a vegetative buffer throughout and around the subdivision and, scre and screening as needed. 21, the subdivision will comply with the open space impact fee with the preservation of lot four, common land, 13.6 acres. 22, the subdivision lots will be provided with access to utilities. 23, the subdivision plan will not be phased. 24, the applicant has substantially addressed the standards of the subdivision ordinance, section 16-3-1. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Mark Geordie for minor subdivision review of a proposed four-lot subdivision located at 41 Old Mill Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that all lots be serviced with public water through the connection to the water line to be installed on Old Mill Road. Two, that the declaration of easement, restriction, covenants, and conditions be reviewed and approved by the town attorney for adequacy of road maintenance and access for lots to the subdivision for, for vehicles. <laughs> Sorry. Great. The planning board grants waivers as authorized in the subdivision ordinance section 16-3-5 for road width and road alignment as, sh as shown on the subdivision plan. Four, the plans be revised and submitted to the town planner for review and approval
prior to recording the subdivision plat. Five, that a performance guarantee be submitted to the town prior to construction of the beginning construction of the road. I'm sorry? On number four, so that'd be subdivision plan. Plat. Plat. Okay. That's that funny little thing we have to sign. Okay, we uh, have a motion made. <coughs> Is there a second? Second. We have a second motion. Is there any discussion? Being none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we have no other items of business other than an opportunity for additional public comment on any subject whatsoever. Would any member of the public like to be heard? <coughs> there being nobody, uh, motion, motion be adjourned. to adjourn. Second. In favor? We're done. Thank you for coming. <laughs>